gentlemen, we welcome you to the Kudos Bank Arena here in Sydney, Australia, as No Limit Boxing and the Rose Brothers present the featured bout in association with TGB Promotions and Premier Boxing Champions. This bout is sponsored by Destinations New South Wales, and it is sanctioned by the WBO President Francisco Valcarcel, and the supervisor is Danny Wright. Introducing to you our three judges scoring from ringside. From Hungary, Zoltan Inyedi. From Japan, Katsuhiko Nakamura. And from Canada, Benoit Roussel. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of our main event, Dunrex Top Dunsan. All right, fans, here we go with the main event, 12 rounds of boxing for the interim WBO Super Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, live on Foxtel Main Event NKO Sports Pay-Per-View, and live from beautiful Sydney, Australia, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, fighting out of inhaling from his hometown of Detroit, Michigan, in the United States. He weighed in at 69.62 kilograms, or 153 and one half pounds. With a record of 29 wins, three losses and one draw, he has 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making his Australian debut. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the WBO number three ranked contender, the hard-hitting former WBC super welterweight champion of the world, introducing Tony Superbad Harrison. And his opponent across the ring, ready to go on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with gold trim. From Herring Bar and fighting out of Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, he weighed in at 69.68 kilograms, or 153 and one half pounds. Proudly representing the outstanding family boxing tradition, he is undefeated in his campaign to the ring. With a record of 21 wins, no losses, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the WBO global title holder, fresh off of his U.S. debut victory, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome boxing's popular superstar of Australia, currently ranked the WBO number one contender in the world, introducing the undefeated Tim Zoom. Once again, our referee in charge, now to give instructions. Don Rex Top Dunson. Okay, Tim, Tony, I gave your instructions in the room. Check yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves. May the best man win. Don Rex Top Dunson is the third man in the ring. 14 years of experience. This will Ready? be his 525th fight. Ready? Let's go. Tim Zhu, Tony oh. Harrison. This one is high risk, high reward. This is round one, and it's Harrison in the red trunk, Zhu in the blue. And Harrison popping the jab, which is one of his staples. Yeah, that's what you want to get on right away if you're Harrison. That jab, throw that jab, put that jab in his face. Upstairs, downstairs. Don't let Tim Sue think. Zoot, typically pressure fighter, likes to come forward. Harrison 
Sandy wants to keep this fight at range. And more than anything, he said, stay off the ropes. To uh, apply the pressure, keeping his hot guard high, try to block that jab. And continues to stab Zhu to the stomach with the jab, going up and down with the stick. I'm liking the all-beat jab that he has. It's a little bit of all-beat. Yeah, a really sharp jab by, by Harrison in this first round. Really winning the round just with the jab. Zhu misses with the left. 90 seconds here in round one. But here comes Sue. This is what, what he's going to do with the entire fight. Pressure, corner, Harrison. Put him on the corner. Put him on the ropes. Still have over a minute to go in this round, but Zhu giving the round away by inactivity. And this works right into what Harrison told us. He feels like he should be able to bank at least the first six rounds with his jab. Zhu throws a three-punch combination. Yeah, and again, you want to entertain uh, Sue with that jab and perhaps get that right hand in early on like Gachet did and catch Sue right in the chin walking in. Here's the jab again, splits the guard of Zoo. Now Zoo now, a double jab. Good jab, pops the head back of Tim Zhu. And here I am thinking, where's that right hand? But again, you want to keep Sue guessing when, when that right hand is coming. So you don't want to throw it too often. Final seconds here of round one as Zhu connects. But around Tony Harrison dominated with just the jab. L.J. Harrison, the older brother of Tony Harrison, his trainer. Let's see, in round one, all, all, to, all Tony going to do is just continue to jab. So now uh, uh, Tim just got to start picking up his pressure and start picking up more punches. So uh, it, it'll get more active right now. And Tony, again, Harrison trying to keep him at range. Tony as well got a sneaky right hand, so I'm just waiting on him to throw it. Harrison likes to take a step back and throw that counter right. You know, Sue has a really good uppercut when he gets in the inside. Again, still early second round. He's trying to find his way in, but definitely Harrison making it difficult with that jab. It was a left hook. Harrison blocked it, though, with the right hand. Harrison not using a lot of lateral movement because he doesn't need to. Yeah, you're right. Not, uh, in this round, Sue's not pressing it enough. He's, he's keeping a little gap, just enough for, for Harrison to feel comfortable in that distance. Jamel, have you seen anything different out of Tony Harrison that you haven't seen in those two fights that you and you fought in? Well, well I know I, I, I usually see Tony moving his legs and, uh, you know, moving around the ring. But, you know, as I see, this is a smaller ring. So, I, I mean, he, he's he's doing good by not moving so much, but he do need to start picking it up so, so he can land that right hand that he throws. There's a right hand that's landed by Zhu. Here is that right hand by Harrison. But that was that there was that uppercut too from, from Sue. He's got a sneaky one. Yeah, one of his favorite punches, Abner. Yeah. So maybe perhaps, you know, Harrison doesn't want to commit with that right hand because he knows that uppercut is coming also. Smart fight, talented fighters. I mean, IQ is there. For sure, he needs to make sure that uh, Zoo uh, stays off balance. And right now, he's not doing that. So he's getting caught with different punches. And that, that uppercut. The uh, right uppercut by Zhu. And you see Harrison holding for the first time. He's generally not a fighter who does a lot of holding. But he doesn't want to be on the inside with Zhu. And by not being on the inside, he's not very vulnerable to body punches. There haven't been any body punches from Zhu yet. As we take a look at uh, power punches here from Showstats. 
Yeah, Harrison's effective punches have been jabs, so you don't see them listed on the power punches. Here comes Sue, the volume is there now. Putting two, three punches together. Jab, left hook by Zhu. Drop that around in round two for Tim Zhu. Here's the final seconds of round two, and Harrison throws a three-punch combination. See, in round two right there, uh, Tony needed to, to, to at least move more. That lateral movement was his problem. Well, you said you said that you see, thought Tim Zhu would pick up the pressure, and it seemed like he did. Picked up the pace, at least, in round two. This is round three, scheduled for 12. Yeah, and, and Jamal has a good point there because Harrison is pulling straight back. He's not using the lateral movements, you know, making it more difficult for Zhu, you know, to get in. You know, and there he goes, two steps back. This ring is really small. And where did you find yourself? Back in the ropes. Right. Like Derek James saying, step over, step yeah. over. Here's a right over the top by Zhu. And Tony's jab starting to mark his face up. There's a double right hand by Tim Zhu. You look at the jabs, that's what Tony Harrison, his staple. 36% of his jabs landing, that's a very high percentage. It's been Harrison's jab against Zhu's right hand. And you know how you, how you take that jab away is by throwing your own jab. Zhu having a little bit more you know, success with his own jab and even better following it up with the right hand and, and in the three piece. Tony, again, pops Zoo back with the jab. A double jab by Harrison. Nice. Again, keep doing that, but jab to the body also. Well, in terms of ring geography, there's no doubt this fight is being fought at the exact distance Harrison wants. If he's effective enough to win the rounds, that's the second question. And he's doing what you said, Steve, that he wanted to keep the fight in the center of the ring. We're seeing a lot more in this round. Yeah, no. There's a right hand, that one rocked Harrison. Back to the ropes. Under a minute left here in round three. Biggest punch of the fight so far comes from Tim Zhu. We were asking for a right hand from Harrison, and, and Sue was the one that landed that, that powerful right hand. Tim Zhu very poised in there. He's in no rush. It's a good chance for him to go to the body. He's not really taking it. Yeah, and he's a great body snatcher, Tim Sue. That left uppercut up just missed. Here's the other right again. A right hand by Zhu. And another right hand. And a left hook. Big round for Tim Zhu. You heard LJ, his trainer, say, look, you've been too defensive. You're waiting. Talk to us, Jamel. And, and see, in, in round three right there, Tony just not moving his legs again, not stepping over, just observing, just taking a punch, just taking um, the power shots from him. But maybe maybe he took his best shot. Let's see. Double jab, right hand to the body by Harrison. To start round four. Yeah, this is where you pick it up from the veteran, Harrison. Yeah, you want to jab, jab, keep him busy. But, you know, again, let, let go of that right hand. Be more offensive. And, you know, you can't help but wonder, being that Harrison got caught with a right hand, mm. will he jab less, worrying about yeah. getting countered? That's a good point. Zoo missed with that right hand. Minute gone here in round four. 
Every time Tony jabs, his jab goes down. He's not bringing it back to his face, so that's causing him to, to get hit with that uh, counter right here. You know, watching Tim Zhu, you just get the impression that this is a fighter whose game plan is to fight the same speed and intensity in rounds 10, 11, and 12 that he's fighting in rounds 1, 2, 3, and 4. Very poised, very in control. Who's in confidence? You look at our show stats and the total power punches. Yeah, a high percentage for Harrison, but very low output. Only six power punches landed in almost four completed rounds. That's not going to get it done. It was a really good round, man. Really close. Both having their moments. There, that's where you want to be if you're Harrison. Jab, jab, right hand, and step back, and then come back and move. Yeah, moved. exactly. Under a minute. Here's Zoo now. Missed with that right hand. Now Harrison is moving. He seems more comfortable and more confident. Here's the final 30 seconds of round four. And you see Harrison moving slowly along the ropes, but Zoo in no rush to uh, take advantage of that situation. None whatsoever, right? It almost seems like he's just waiting for the right time to let go of his overhand right. Missed with the left hook. Tony Harrison, ranked number four. Tim Zhu, number one contender, the winner. Gets the undisputed champ, Jermel Charlo. This is round five. See, in the last round, I saw Tim throw more jabs. Tim landed more jabs. Tony's starting to move now. He's starting to become more, oh, I don't want to get hit with the, the hard shot. So now it's time. Um, they're going to take it up now. Against the ropes, there's the right hand that lands for Tim Zhu. So Tim, so you know he studied this, oh, you know, Harrison really well. And this is the rounds where he's going to press a lot more. Here's the body shot, the left, left hook to the body by Zeus. Counter right hand by Harrison. Yeah, even more to the body, knowing that Harrison could start fading. Zoo trying to keep Harrison on the ropes. There's the right uppercut. And it's really the first time in the fight, guys, where Tony Harrison has ha had an extended session up, up, along the ropes. That one went a little low. And again, you see Zoo applying the pressure. Yeah, if you're Harrison, you don't want to fight Zoo toe-to-toe. -to -toe. There's the right hand. Backs him to the corner. Definitely not going to win that fight against a younger fighter. Harrison, jab to the stomach. Harrison seems content to fight off the ropes. There's a right to the body by Zhu. And that's what Harrison needs to do too, counter punch. I haven't seen the counter punching much from, from Harrison. This is a dangerous time for Tony Harrison because it generally against, against the better opponents he's faced, he's been either ahead or very close on the cards at this point in the fight. I think he's fallen behind here and this is a tough spot for him given how important this fight is to his career. And considering he's fighting in Tim Zoo, Tim Zoo's homeland here of Australia. There's a good one, too. And then a left hook to the body by Zoo. Harrison's still effective with the jab, but that's all. There haven't, hasn't been enough power behind the jab. He needs to land that right hand the way Terrell Gachet did in round one against Zoo. There's a right by Harrison that scores. Yeah. 
11,740. Bucks. In Kudos Bank <laughs> Arena. Tony Harris and Tim Zhu. The winner fights the undisputed king of the division, Jamel Charlo. Ooh, there's a left hook. They both kind of hooked each other right there. But look how Sue doesn't, doesn't commit just yet. He's waiting for the right time. You know, I know when you look at what you've seen out of Tim Zhu, is this what you were expecting when you were training for him or Correct. anything different? Correct. I see that um, a lot of stuff that we was uh, preparing for and um, just coming forward, a lot of pressure to pick it up later in the rounds. He don't really just get off too fast and uh, throw a bunch of power shots and, and, uh, and um, you know, the same thing we're seeing right now. No, no jabs. There's the jab and then follow it with the right hand. Double jab by Harrison as he works his way off the ropes. I know we're only at the half, roughly the halfway mark of this fight, but it's not too early, I don't think, to realize that the fact that this is a scheduled 12 as opposed to a scheduled 10 rounder is a big advantage for Tim Zhu. He's so poised, he looks like he could box yeah. 20 rounds. Definitely is. You're right, Steve. And now he's maintaining this fight, you know, little by little, poised, not throwing too much, just right. And really just the pressure that he's putting right now is tiring Harrison, mentally and physically. Here's a double jab by Harrison. He tries to give Zeus some movement. That's when Harrison is at his best right here, as he's moving around the ring and, and, and pop shotting making them eat jabs. Here's that jab. Avoids the right hand. Gotta put his hands back up. Oh. It's Troy Knight. Here's a left hook to the body by Tim Zhu. Overhand right. And he's got Harrison against the ropes. When Harrison lands in combination, Zhu just seems to do a little bit more every time. Here's the final seconds of round six. And Harrison finishes it with a double jab. You want to continue to do that. Make Tim Sue miss just like he did right there. We've come to the halfway point of this fight. Tony Harrison, Tim Zhu. The winner gets the fight for the undisputed title. Brian Custer. Steve Farhood, Abner Mars, and Jamel Charlo here with you as these two fight it out in Australia. And since we're at the halfway point, let's see what our unofficial score. Steve Farhood, how you had this fight scored thus far? Well, Cuss, I gave Tony Harris in the first round. I've given him no rounds since. Maybe a couple were close and arguable, but for the most part, I think it's been dominated by Tim Zhu. I'm 55, 59-55 at the halfway mark. Mm. Abner? You heard LJ, his brother, talk to him in the court. What, what can Tony Harrison do? Does he have enough power to keep Tim Zhu off of it? I don't know about that right now with the power, but he does have enough arsenal as far as volume. He's got good punches where he can keep him at bay with that jab, right hand, and move, get out of the way. But another thing that Jamal pointed out when the fight started, it's the ring. I think the ring is a little small, man. And, you know, every time Harrison takes two steps back, he finds himself on the ropes already. But now it's when he's going to have to uh, dig deep and fight off the ropes and, and try to keep, Tony, to keep Tim in the middle of the ring and, um, and keep him on his front foot. Just keep him, like, moving, you know, like, 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 like he's doing now, stepping on the side, stepping, keep stepping. Let's take a look at our show stats and power punches. How about this round by round? 
Steve Farhood. Yeah, and that's exactly why Tim Zhu is winning this fight fairly handily on my card. He's landing the biggest shots, and Harrison very, very low output in power shots. And as far as the size of the ring, guys, Tim Zhu is fighting at home, and the smaller <laughs> ring favors him. What a shock. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> But even when there's not a lot of volume from Harrison, you want to keep doing that. Make, make Sue miss like he's doing right there, but come back with your own punch. There you go. Couple of jabs by Harrison, trying to keep Sue off of him. Keep him entertained with that jab. There's the right hand. Jab, and again, Sue with the hook. Sue's also vulnerable for the uppercut. When he leans forward, the uppercut's there for Harrison. Here's the right hand by Tony Harrison. Then jabs to the body of Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu has talked about, this is a legacy fight for me. I want big fights in Abner, Talk to me about what this does for Tim Zhu. Here you are now in round eight. It appears to be well in command of this fight. From an experience standpoint, what does this do for Tim Zhu, considering he wants to fight this guy who is with us tonight, the Undisputed King? By getting a lot of experience tonight against Tony Harrison, and pretty much rocked him, too, with that straight right hand, Abner. That's a beautiful right hand from Zhu, uppercut. I mean, pretty much, you know, give him a little bit of his own medicine because Harrison came in here saying, hey, you never fought anyone like me. You never fought anyone, period. And here we go. Here we see Tim Sue just, you know, putting the pressure and putting the works into Harrison. But definitely does a lot mentally and, you know, physically if he gets his win tonight. Let's take a look at what these guys have done past the seventh round. Harrison, seven, three, and one. He's got one knockout. Tim Zhu unbeaten. 6-0 and oh with a knockout as well. And what's interesting about Harrison's three losses, in all three of those losses, at the time of the stoppage, he was either ahead or even on at least one of the cards. So he indeed has faded late. Here's a left hook to the body by Tim Zhu. Follows up with a right hand, but there's Harrison with an uppercut. Yeah, you're right about that, Stephen. The three losses that Harrison has, you know, uh, he was, you know, he was closing those scorecards. He was doing his work, but it is in this fight has been Tim Sue pretty much all fight. Now against the ropes, Harrison trying to fight his way off. Sneaky uppercut, overhand right. Sue comes back with a right of his own, and then a left to the body and a right uppercut. That's the story of the fight in microcosm. Cuss uh, a nice punch from Harrison and three back from Sue. We hit a minute of round eight. They battle out in a phone booth. Uppercut by Zoo. Harrison comes back with a right hand. Harrison holding his own on the inside, but is that a place where he can turn the fight around? I don't think he can't move anymore. That's why he's, th he's staying in there. He tires more by using the whole ring. Just stay there. But hey, choose your punches wisely. Use those lateral movements. Harrison oh. slips. Oh. Wait. Time, time. Go there. Go there. Tony, go there. Go there. Stay there. Please, please. Obviously, obviously some kind of moisture in the ring. Please, please. yeah. Okay. Stay there, okay? I don't think Harrison would have any objection to a little no, time, no, time no, out. No, 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 he needs it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, stay there, stay there, stay there. Okay, come on, let's go, box. Looping left hook by Zoo misses. Harrison pops it with a double jab and then another one. 
You can see that right eye, a little shiner under Tony Harrison's right eye. Go there. Please. And round, and round, and round eight, you see a whole different fight now. You see Tony standing in the middle. You see him not really moving much. Um, you know, the pressure just being in Australia might have something is wearing him down. And it's just not. Is, is, is this not the, the, the normal Tony that fought Sergio Garcia? Well, to your point, champ, if you watch the, the range of this fight at the beginning, obviously it was Harrison with that jab, but there's another left hand by Zhu. Now it's in close. This is where Tim Zhu wants this fight. Yeah, and that happens early on in the fight. That's why you got to wait until, like, the third, fourth round. We're like, all right, this is the beginning. You know, uh, Zhu trying to fill out Harrison. That's why, you know, H Harrison had his moments with the jab, but it's that pressure that Tim Sue is applying right now, and at a good range. And keep in mind, this is the round where Tim Zhu said, I'm gonna turn the tide and start to drown Tony Harrison. And what did Tony say? If he drowns me, I'm-, I'm I've been I'm, drowned I've before. I've been drowned before. <laughs> so Come we'll back see. to life. <laughs> we'll see. The irony of this situation is this is about the time in Tony Harrison's fights where he's faded and gotten stopped. Tonight, he may need a knockout, or at least a couple of knockdowns to stay in this fight against Tim Zhu. Double left hook by Tim Zhu. And then a right hand. Harrison pops his head back with a jab. And again. Just gotta follow it up with that right hand. Yeah. He's throwing a jab, but he's not throwing nothing else. There's that right hand that you talked about, champ. Double jab. Another one, but no right hand. We take a look at the total power punches, which is everything minus a jab. Yeah, that's almost three times the number of punches thrown, power punches thrown by Zhu, and almost three times the number landed. And that's the story of the fight right there. There's a right hand. And another right hand right on the button to Harrison. And a right to the runner. Harrison's hurt. He's get hurt. Zhu backs him to the ropes. There's a left hook. No movement, no holding. Yeah, he needs to grab him. He's got to hold on. Double uppercut by Zhu. He's looking to stop Tony Harris, and it drops him. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come here. Dan Rex, Top Dawson says that is it. Tim Zhu said, I'm going to drown him in round nine, and he gets the stoppage. He predict predicted that, and he did it. Wow, ninth round. Again, the pressure from Tim Zhu. It was just too much for Harrison tonight. A steady, even performance by Tim Zhu. And if I had to use one word to kind of put in perspective now his ch eventual challenge of our man Jermel over here. It's, he, legit he further legitimized himself as a, as a contender. Jermel, tell me what you saw. I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. Um, he he, he um, did exactly what he was supposed to do. He stood in there, he fought, he had his hands up, kept punching. Tony Harrison fades at the end. He dominated during his time, and, and, and that's it. But I'm none of those guys, you know what I'm saying? I'm not no Tony Harrison. I'm gonna get in there and do what I gotta do. And move my, move my beat. Let's take a look at uh, the show stats totals here. And again, it was those power punches that did in Tony Harrison. Yeah, 39% th of uh, Zeus punches landed, but 45% of his power shots. When you land 45% of your power shots and you throw as many as Zoo did in this fight, you're gonna win every time. Here's the finish, the uppercut as you talked about. And it wasn't just one uppercut, one, two, three, four, five uppercuts. He kept missing one, two, and with the overhand right, that was, that's the one that did it. And I would like to have seen the referee step in there. I mean, when you see Tony Harrison's head getting hit like this, Wow. Especially as he turned away there. I think that would have been a good time for the referee to come in, but the referee didn't, and as a result, Harrison suffered the knockdown. Last time Tim Zhu had gotten a stoppage, it was July of 2021 when he stopped Steve Spark. He gets the stoppage tonight.
and once again has set himself up with a showdown against the undisputed king of the division, Jamel Charlo. Still undefeated, and now the interim WBO Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Tim Zoom! Tim Zhu gets a ninth round stoppage. He remains unbeaten. He will be facing Jamel Charlo. Tell me what you saw out of Tim Zhu. How would you, how do you see a Jamel Charlo Tim hey, Zhu hey, fight? He was, uh, uh, you know, impressive. He did what he had to do at home. He was a little flat to me. Uh, didn't throw enough jabs at the beginning, but you know, my movement, my style, my power will make him do completely different things. Yeah, I think we have to remember that he wasn't in with Jamel Charlo. He was, he was in with Tony Harrison, and there's a big difference. But you know what? This, I'm sure, proved to be a very significant fight for Tim Zhu's confidence. Because to fight for all four championship Tim belts, Zou. you need to be a confident fighter. Just for a moment, have Let's a Let's go around, into the ring. Here's Tim Zhu with Ben Damon. Through the confetti. Not many people get a moment like this. What does it feel like? Thank you, Australia! I got one, one sentence. What's my motherfucking name? Is that what this was about? Is that what all this was about? Is it about proving to everyone, to Tony, to America, to all of the doubters that you belong? No, man. This, this is what Every single one of you, that's what it's all about. Every single one that's ever purchased pay-per-view, that's ever come here, that just supports boxing in general, I did it for all of you brothers and sisters. <laughs> there was a different mood to you though through the course of the build-up to this. Um, we've talked about the Soul Taker before. The Soul Taker was well and truly here tonight. You know what, I was smart, I was smart. I knew he had a jab, so I had to be smart about it. Because the competitor that I had in front of me, he's the man that beat the man. Which means I just beat the man who beat the man. What does that make me? A word on this man, because uh, he's won a lot of fans. He's been great in the build up to this, but what was it like sharing the ring with him here today? My pleasure, man. The, the respect is always there. We never bowed mouth each other. We had a bit of banter, but, uh, we always had respect for each other, you know, and uh, in this ring is where we prove to each other, you know, and tonight I was the man that proved to him the, that I was a better man. Now, Tim, there are lots of Americans watching. One of them is named Jamel Charlo. Do you have a message for him? <laughs> the message was sent clearly. You know what's up. You know what's next. I'm coming. I'm coming to Ve I'm coming to America. Congratulations on this, Tim. Perhaps the first of many. Any final words to, to everyone who's come out here today and who's watching around the world? Australia, you know, but the world you know now. What's my motherfucking name? <laughs> Say my motherfucking name. Tim Zoo. And if we could have a chat to Tony Harrison and a round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen, for the former world champion and a tough, tough dude, Tony Harrison. Firstly, are you okay? Yeah, 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 I'm cool, man. Um, I train hard, extremely hard for the fight. I don't need no more victories. The better man won tonight. And, uh, you know, the, the city is electric, the crowd was electric, and like I said, the better man won tonight. Just a word on Zoo, because you know global boxing better than anyone, and you've been to the very top of the tree, and it's been such a pleasure to have you here, but how good is Tim Zoo? Uh, the, be the better man won tonight. I, can't, I, I ain't gonna you know, give my assessment on him. The better man won tonight. That's all I can say is the better man won tonight. Um, he on the bigger and better things. And you know, I don't know where I go from here. Wherever you go, we hope that you come back here sometime, because you're welcome anytime. Tony Harrison, you're a champion. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Tim, congratulations, my boy. Tony Harrison and the victorious Tim Zoo.
All right, welcome back inside our New York City uh, studios. We just saw Tim Zhu stop Tony Harrison there in the ninth round. Besides, you know, Tim Zhu asking people to tell him what his <laughs> name is. Uh, give me your thoughts here on uh, facing Tim Zhu. Man, I'm ready. You know, I, when, when I get my hand right and we get back in the ring for some, some more training, put him back in. We, we, that's, that's that work. <laughs> Did you see anything different out of Tim Zhu than what you were training for? No, this is exactly what we've seen. Mm -hmm. Come forward, not as fast and big, bigger pace. Mm -hmm. Strong, of course, throw hard punches. Um, don't we all? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, but I'm a different, I'm a different animal in there. Like, I'm a different fighter than Tony. He can't compare me and try to compare Tony's skills of boxing. He did move um, less than what he normally does, but... Um, Obviously, because the ring was smaller. Correct, the mm -hmm. ring was smaller, but, you know, that, that still doesn't, you know, t he, he didn't dog it out. He didn't bring that dog in. If he wanted to fight me, he would have to bring more dog in him. But t uh, Tim is next, and that's what we have before the injury, so it's not like I'm not prepared already. Right. Absolutely. You know? So Man, Interesting. Tell me what you saw. Well... Clearly, the night was about Tim Zhu. He's 28 years old. He's in his prime, and now he's getting ready to fight Jamel for all four belts. A quick point about Tony Harrison. He's 32 years old. Sometimes in boxing, 32 can be older than it sounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the bigger point for his future is that there's only one champion at 154 pounds. So it's not like he can go fight this guy right. or fight another guy or fight for the WBA or the WBC. There's only one champion. He now moves to the back of the line. How much longer would he want to wait and is he capable of regaining his status so that he could get another shot at a title? I don't know the answer to that, but I don't think so. And, and at one point in that fight, Abner, I remember telling you, does Tony Harrison have enough to keep Tim Zhu off of him? And I, obviously we saw the, we saw we saw the answer to that, and obviously this guy's got a whole <laughs> lot more firepower uh, than Tony Harrison. But what did you see out of Tim Zhu? Well, it surprised me that it didn't... Uh, it didn't um... I mean, I was impressed by Tim Zhu's performance, honestly. I just liked the fact that he was so poised so concentrated. He knew what he had to do in that fight. He didn't press in the third, fourth round. He pressed when he needed to press. Yeah. And when he saw that he was hurt enough, he took him out. And I mean, that's what, that's, that's what, the, what I like about fighters that are growing, maturing, to get to the level that they want to want to be in. And I think he, he showcased that tonight and deserving of a fight against Jamal. And uh, I think we're just going to see a great fight when these two fight. I love that he was prescient, that he told yeah. us the ninth round is going to be the, where I turn <laughs> the tide, and he certainly got the stoppage in that ninth round. And one, one a final point for me, Cus. This fight was in Australia. Jamel's the fighter with the four belts. Yeah. I'm guessing he's not going to Australia. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming over here. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the highlights here as Tim Zhu gets the stoppage over Tony Harrison. And we go inside the ropes. And it started well for Tony Harrison. But then Tim Zhu started coming on stronger. Yeah, the jab in the first round specifically was really, really sharp for Tony Harrison. He won that round on my card. And then as the fight progressed, you saw more and more right hands from Zhu. Not a lot of jabs, but again, he was very patient. Abner pointed it out several times. Very patient, took his time. And before you knew it, we were around six or seven, and Harrison spent long periods of time during each round on the ropes. And that enabled Zhu to land the right hand and some body shots. All the power shots in the fight were landed by Zhu. And uh, it was brutal at the end. This is the stoppage coming up in round number nine. It was those right hands. And then against the ropes, it was just Zhu, the uppercuts, and he just teed off on Harrison, and that was it as Harrison went down. And after Dan Rex, Dapperson had him walk over, looked in his eyes, and said, that was it. Ninth round stoppage for Tim Zhu.